Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about our wedding day. I know so many of you have been waiting for this video for a while, so I am so excited to finally be able to film it. This is going to be a complete roundup from our big day, so all the little details from where it was, what style it was, what we wore, what we ate, what we did, just everything you could want to know. I do have my photos back now, so I will be inserting those where I can, as well as the old iPhone pic as well. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get going. So first up, the venue. So we got married in the south of France in the Provence region. If you're familiar with the area, it's about 20 minutes outside of Avignon. And we got married at a property called Chateau Talou, which was a beautiful French chateau. And what we loved about it was the fact that it very much looked like a traditional chateau. But at the same time, you had a vineyard as well. So it just added something a little bit extra. And because of the vineyard, it was super green and lush as well, which in the south of France is quite a feat because it's so hot and warm there so we loved it for that and we just love the fact there were so many spaces we could use for the wedding as well so we had our ceremony and our cocktail hour and our reception all in different areas and that's just because they had so much to play with and they just had so many areas that you could utilize so we found the property, viewed it, fell in love with it, and then booked it the very next day. We were really lucky because they only take a few weddings a year, so we got in there early, which I'm so grateful and thankful for. We knew we always wanted an outdoor wedding, and Chateau Talou was perfect in that way. It ticked all our boxes, but it didn't have any indoor space, so we didn't have a plan B if the weather was bad. So it was recommended that we get a marquee, but we weren't so keen on a marquee, so we decided to build a pergola instead, which I know sounds totally crazy but Dan and Dan's family are pretty good with wood so Dan sketched it all out he planned it all he found the materials did all the research and then we did a dry run in Birmingham a few months before it went okay it looked really good and so we decided to go ahead and build kind of full version during the wedding week it was a bit nuts and intense. Um, if I was gonna do it all again, I'm not sure that we would take on quite so many DIY projects because everyone was working like on the wedding day. Like it was crazy busy. We were also a day delayed because of transport issues, but it all came together, but it was definitely a team effort. So Dan's mum did all the drapes. She's an amazing sewer, so she sewed all the drapes herself. My mum did the electric, so we had these amazing chandeliers and she hooked up and wired those all herself. Um, Dan, Dan himself and then Dan's mum's friends came out and then they were helping build the pagola as well. I had my maid of honor and her boyfriend, who was also amazing with wood. He was building bars and helping with the pagola. And, Oh my goodness, it was so crazy. It was kind of team building, but it was also a little bit stressful, but the end result was amazing. I had seen the dry run obviously before, but seeing it all kind of come together, it just totally blew me away. It really outdid my expectations and I thought it looked so amazing in the end. So we had a U shape basically, and then we had tables all the way along. And then we had a DJ table at one end or a DJ booth. And then we had a dessert table and bar at the other end. And then in the middle, we had the dance floor. So it was open air, but it still felt a little bit enclosed. So it was kind of the best of both worlds. Thankfully, nothing happened with the weather anyway, but I was so, so thrilled with how it looked. It just looked so stunning and everyone worked so hard, which I was so grateful for. Onto my dresses now, and I did end up having two dresses, which was not my intention going in. I was pretty set on only having one dress, just because I figured you only get to wear your wedding dress once, and I wanted to wear mine for as many hours as I could. But after having found my first dress, I realized that mobility was probably gonna be a bit of an issue. It wasn't the most practical of dress choices, so I kind of had to get a second dress just so I'd actually be able to move and enjoy my reception. So my first dress was from Marquesa, and I found it after trying on probably about 100 other dresses. It was a very long process, and I was so over it by that point, as was my poor mum, who'd been with me to every single appointment. And I found this dress, actually Dan found the dress, and he actually picked it out, but he didn't realise that until the day when I told him. So I had been going to dress appointments try to figure out what I wanted. I had a pretty clear idea, um, but then I made the mistake of asking Dan what he liked in wedding dresses, and it turns out he is unbelievably fussy. So the list of things which he doesn't like is incredibly extensive. He doesn't like lace, he doesn't like tool, he doesn't like anything see-through or netty, he doesn't like sleeves, he doesn't like colour, he doesn't applique. Like, the list is ridiculous. And so every dress I tried on after that, 
I got myself in such a tiz. I hadn't even planned on really consulting him, but then I was so worried that he'd hate the dress that I was wearing. So one night I asked him to sit down and actually look at some wedding dresses with me and I was on Vogue.com looking at the new Marquesa collection and I found a dress which I liked and then in the background Dan picked out this dress and I was like why that dress and he was like I don't know it's clean it's simple but I was like it has applique detail it's really big like all things which you said you didn't like and he's like I don't know, I just like it. So I decided to try it on. I managed to track it down in a trunk show in LA at the time I was visiting. And as soon as I tried it on, I just knew it felt totally different from all the others. I loved it. It was nothing like what I thought I wanted to go for. So I was pretty set on doing strapless. I thought I'd go for a fit and flare or maybe an A-line. I was pretty certain I was gonna go for like a light fabric like a tool. And this was off the shoulder, it was massive, it was a heavy fabric, just all things which I said I didn't want. But for some reason it worked. I will insert a picture of me trying on for the first time, but I absolutely loved it. So I went away for 30 minutes and had a coffee and then came back and paid for it and just knew it was my dress. And then of course I needed a second dress and I'd done so much dress shopping at that point that I couldn't bear the thought of doing it anymore. So I decided to go down the custom dress route and have something made. So I ended up going to Shimbu Bridal who's based in LA. It's a husband and wife team and I would highly recommend them. They were absolutely amazing. Nothing was too big or too small. They were so accommodating and patient. I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted at that point just because I tried on so many dresses. So I was able to show them photos of different elements of different Different dresses and they basically combined it all together sketched it all out for me and then started making it they were so so great they were truly just one of the best experience I had in terms of wedding planning in general um, so I went for a fit and flare style it had it tall across the top and then buttons down the back and then it was just very body hugging and then flared out so I'd be able to dance it was so light and comfortable to wear and I'm just so glad I decided to go down the custom route I have already talked about my accessories in a different video so I'm not gonna go over over everything but very quickly my shoes were from Jimmy Choo and then I got my veil from Etsy from a seller called Blossom and Bluebird I believe and I absolutely loved it it was highly impractical it got caught on literally everything but it was just so ethereal and magical it was well worth the pain of trying to kind of drag it around with me I got it done super super long so I think it was longer than cathedral length if that's the longest one um, and then I had a blusher as well but I thought it was so romantic I knew I wanted a long veil just because when else do you get to wear a veil and it was well worth the money I absolutely love mine As for our wedding rings, we got them from Sunny's Jewelry, who's run by a friend of ours. He also made my engagement ring and is the most talented jeweler ever. He has a shop in Birmingham and not only is he lovely, but he's just so, so crazy talented. And I saw a photo on Pinterest of the kind of ring that I wanted and he was able to make me something pretty much exactly the same. So I went for a, I guess it's kind of like a bubble diamond effect. I'm sure there's a technical term, but I don't know what it is. And it's just a simple eternity band. So I wanted something that was a similar thickness to my engagement ring but I didn't want it to be too matchy matchy and this is exactly the look that I wanted I was so thrilled with it I didn't see it until the actual wedding day so I was a bit nervous but he did an amazing job so I'll leave his details below if you're in Birmingham you can pop into a store but I think he also has an online shop and he's absolutely amazing as for what everyone else wore so my bridesmaids were in at Jenny Yu and I was so thrilled with how this look turned out they all wore the Annabelle dress which is from the convertible line so they had these straps which they could tie any way they wanted and they all wore them different ways so they all made them their own and everyone absolutely loved the dresses and they all looked so beautiful in them so I had six bridesmaids and I went for three different colors I really wanted to do a mix and match look the colors I went for off the top of my head were cashmere which was like an off-white kind of creamy color a pink which was the cameo pink and then also a gray which had a hint of lilac to it which was the mink gray I loved how it all looked. We had flowers in a kind of pale pink lilac combination, so it really brought out the colors as well, and they all just looked absolutely amazing. So I was so happy with the bridesmaids dresses. They all looked incredible. My flower girl wore a dress from Isabel Garraton, and she looked absolutely amazing. My flower girl was my niece, Annie, and she just had the best time, and she looked so adorable. So the dress was a kind of flare out type, um, but what I loved about it was 
was it was a proper little kind of traditional flower girl dress but it had these little applique flowers which matched my own dress so we were kind of twinning which she loved as well we styled it with just her hair back and then she had this adorable flower crown and then we gave her a little basket full of rose petals she was absolutely star of the show she looked so cute and I know she just had so much fun twirling around with it it was also super light as well because it was so hot that day so she was really comfortable she wore it all day long and she just looked absolutely amazing as for Dan he went for a pretty classic three-piece suit he didn't really want to do black tie just because not really his style and he wanted something he'd be able to wear again regularly so he went for a very classic navy three-piece suit with a navy tie I believe he got it from TM Lewin he left it until two weeks before the wedding oh my goodness I freaked out when I heard that but he managed to pull it off and get something in time um, and then all the groomsmen also wore navy suits and they all had matching happy socks which I thought was such a fun touch because Dan's favorite thing in the world is happy socks I get them for him every Christmas and every birthday and so they all got matching happy socks in like a polka dot pattern so when they sat down you could just see like this row of matching socks it was so funny So as for the kind of key bits from the day, we did end up doing a first look, which I'm so glad we did. If you're contemplating doing one, I would definitely recommend it because it was such a crazy day. It was so nice just to have a couple of minutes to ourselves, just to soak it all in and just have a quiet moment. So we love doing that. We were also able to do some bridal party photos before the ceremony as well, which is really great because it kind of eased the time pressure later on. The ceremony was towards the back of the chateau and it was all green and we had the little our way decorated with rose bushes and then rose petals all the way down then we had this beautiful flower arch my florist did an absolutely amazing job every idea I had she was able to bring to life and she was just so so incredible I'll leave her details down below if you do happen to be getting married in the south of France because she was absolutely incredible would definitely definitely recommend um, we had a fairly short ceremony we had our friend officiating which was so nice because it was so personal to us and then we did end up writing our own vows which I think thought in theory was a good idea but I was an absolute mess I thought I might get a bit emotional but I was a wreck I started crying on my first line and it was such a struggle to get through the whole thing I just about managed it Dan was absolutely fine he's amazing at public speaking anyway so he just trooped through and I was just like a bawling mess um but I did just about manage to get through it um and then the cocktail hour happened towards um it was actually in front of the chateau and then we had different stations through throughout so we really wanted it to be kind of fun and interactive so we did the normal canapes um, but we also had a live burger station both Dan and myself are huge burger fans so we knew we wanted burgers to feature in some way so we had a little cooking station with hot burgers and then we had little drink stations dotted around as well so there was a rehydrate dehydrate station where we had water and beer where people could help themselves and then we also had a rosé bar where we were serving my favorite rosé champagne as as well as some rosé wine because obviously Provence is very much known for its rosé wine and then we also had a whiskey tasting table as well which we called the whiskey spot so we had I think 15 different whiskies down as a big whiskey person and then we got little tasting notes as well so I think it was mostly used by the guys but they all seemed to really like it and it was a cool little photo op as well I mentioned that the reception was in the pergola and we had a little lounge area just outside if people wanted to chill out away from all the madness later on and it was very well used I saw quite a few people taking a little time out there. We also had a photo booth just outside the pergola as well and undoubtedly that was the best money we spent on the entire wedding. It wasn't that expensive, I think it was like four or five hundred euros. We built the backdrop ourselves um, but it was such a hit. I cannot even tell you how much it was used. I think the key was that we were able to get printouts immediately and they were unlimited as well so everyone was able to get a copy but so so many people used it. In fact I think pretty much everyone used it and that was whether they were younger older just everyone seemed to love it I had the best time as well we got little props just from Hobbycraft I think so everyone used those and it was just the best thing so if you're thinking about getting a photo booth I definitely recommend it because we were already 50 50 you know it was just one of those expenses which we didn't think was totally necessary but we loved it and now everyone I speak to who's getting married is like I'm definitely having a photo booth so 
absolutely money well spent. As for the food, we spent a long time devising the menu. Our caterers were very, very patient. We really wanted a food that people actually wanted to eat rather than just fancy food for the sake of being fancy. So for the main course, we had a mixed grill platter. So it was sharing plate style. So we had beef, lamb and chicken, and we had this amazing gravy as well. Um, and then we had just fresh green salad and we had mac and cheese, which is Dan's favorite. And then we had the best sweet potato mash I think I've ever had. Super, super good. Um, for dessert, we had a whole dessert table, which was just filled with mini versions of our favorite desserts. So there were mini eclairs, little Eaton messes, mini apple crumbles, there were little raspberry tarts, just so much good stuff. I spent a lot of time at the dessert table. Um, and then the wedding cake was a few different tiers. So the top tier, I think, was lemon sponge, and then it was red velvet later on. So good, and then as the little takeaway gifts, we also did um, macaroon jars as well with vanilla macaroons. So there was a lot of food, everyone was pretty full, including myself, but it all tasted amazing. And then for our first dance, we ended up choosing Elton John's Your Song. We wanted something really classic, and that just fit the bill perfectly. We both love the song, and happily, I didn't fall over, which was my main goal for the first dance. I was so concerned Dan was going to spin me and I was just going to tumble over, but that didn't happen, so I was thrilled. Um, and then it basically turned into a crazy dance party. It lasted until 3 a.m., so it got kind of messy, um, but I think everyone had a good time. I know we definitely did. It was just the best night, and I know people say it, but you really can't describe the feeling of everyone coming together and everyone being there for you and just feeling the love in the room. It was just so amazing, or the room, or kind of the outside, um, but it was absolutely amazing, and we really did have just the best day. So that is it for this video guys, I hope that you enjoyed it. Hopefully I covered everything that you wanted to know, but if I missed anything out then leave me a question below. I will also have a blog post going live with a few extra photos, so if you can't get enough wedding content then I will link that down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!